Welcome to English Country Life. Here in the small holding, we endeavour to grow as much of our own food as possible, and fruit plays a large part in that. I love strawberries, but our strawberry plants are going into their fourth year, and in the fourth year, production starts to drop off a little bit. So we're moving our strawberries to brand new beds where they've got brand new nutrients, where they'll be really vigorous and give us new fruit. In this video, I'm going to show you three methods of getting brand new strawberry plants and show you what we're doing to establish those beds. Welcome, my name's Fiona. Here on the small holding, we've got 300 square foot of growing space for our strawberries. But when we planted these strawberries three years ago, we didn't have the variety of fruits that we've got now. We now have apples, cherries, pears, gauges, plums, raspberries, blackberries, gooseberries, white currants, red currants, black currants, and a whole array. And I'm sure I've forgotten some things in there. But ultimately what that means is we don't need 300 square foot of strawberries anymore. So we're gonna be reducing that to 200 square feet. Each of these raised beds is 100 square foot in size but it's not as easy as just taking out one of these beds because over time, strawberries lose vigor. Their maximum production is year two and year three, but by year four, the fruits are getting a little bit smaller and the volume's dropping off. And gradually over the years, it'll get less and less and the fruit will get smaller and smaller. So this year, I'm gonna be generating two brand new 200 square foot of growing space. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you three methods of getting brand new strawberry plants and show you what we're doing but let's start with method number one which is the cheapest option and then we'll move upwards to the most expensive but let's get started with method number one Method number one is the cheapest and easiest way of creating new strawberry plants, and that is using runners. Now, strawberry plants like to reproduce themselves by throwing out stalks with small plants on the end. And if you happen to take that small plant, push it into soil or compost, it'll actually grow new roots, and then you can create a brand new strawberry plant. So what we've tried to do is put black plastic pots, sink them into the soil with some compost in, and we've pushed those runners of plants into the top of that compost. Now the idea was that they'd grow in that pot, we could then just pick the pot up, put it into a new location and create a brand new strawberry bed. Unfortunately, last summer we had a prolonged dry spell and Hugh and I were so busy with other projects that we didn't keep on top of the watering for those plants. Now all the, all the mature plants were absolutely fine because their roots were down into the water table, but these runner plants weren't able to establish their roots long enough to go through the bottom of the pot and get water from the water table. So unfortunately they dried out and we had an epic fail. So that means we need to use a different method of propagation. So let's have a look at method number two. If runners haven't worked for you, method number two might be the way forward. It's the next cheapest option and it's buying seeds. You may not have thought about this, but I've tried this a lot in the past and I've been very, very successful. I have about 80 to 90% success rate. Now, unfortunately for me, I wasn't quick to the party down at the local garden centre. So there was only this variety left. And this is the most expensive with the least amount of seeds in the packet. So I've actually paid just under three pound for 20 seeds. But normally I'd be paying a lot less for a lot more. But I'm still expecting to get 16 to 18 plants out of this one packet of seeds. Now, this is the equipment I'm going to be using. I'm going to be putting them in a seed tray with some specialist compost, then in an electric um, propagator, which I'm going to sit on a windowsill for a few weeks while the plants start to establish themselves. But let me show you the seed compost that I'll be using. And this is a seed compost that I'm going to be using. It's a John Innes seed compost. And I think you can see there that it's very, very fine. And that's great for the small seeds because it means they won't rot actually in the mixture before they've started to germinate and put some roots down. Now, the only thing is they do recommend that you add some vermiculite to this mixture just so that when the roots do start to develop, the small plants can access some moisture. But 
I don't have vermiculite in stock and in the smallholders mantra it's try not to spend any money if you can so I've had a look around to see what I do have and I've got water gel that I used in the hanging baskets last year. Now water gel is very different to vermiculite it doesn't just take on a little bit of moisture it rapidly expands its volume to take on huge quantities of moisture so i've got to use it very very sparingly in this mixture and it may turn out to be a mistake but it's what i've got and i'm going to give it a try because the strawberry seed packet only has 20 seeds in it, I've decided to use two 10 cell seed trays. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill some of the cells with some compost. Now I'm just going to do four for now so you can see what I'm doing. And when it's loosely reaching the top, I'm going to firm that down. And then add a little bit more loosely so it reaches the top again. You might be noticing that I've worn some latex gloves. It's a very good idea when handling compost to be wearing some type of glove. Now, because I need to be able to feel what I'm doing, because I'm going to be handling seeds, I'm choosing to use latex gloves because it still gives me that sense of touch, which you don't get with thick gardening gloves. This is what strawberry seed actually looks like and it's tiny. Now so that I can accurately get the seeds on top of the compost because I'm not actually popping them into the compost, I'm just going to lay them on top. I've taken my gloves off for now so that I can actually feel what I'm doing. So let's get on with that as the next job. Sowing strawberry seed is very very simple. What I'm going to do is put just the seed on the surface there and you can barely see it because it's so small and then I'm just going to firm it down. We don't cover it with any compost, that's all we do. Now I'll add a little bit of water, pop the lid of the propagator on and plug it in so it's gently heated to allow the young plant to start to sprout. Method number three is to buy some bare root strawberry plants and they're available in winter when there's a dormant growing season so the plants aren't growing anymore and this is what the plants look like so a good amount of green growth on the top and a lot of very very strong healthy roots on the bottom. Now popping them in is really simple we have prepared this bed here using compost from our composters we've rotivated it in and then we've raked it to a fine tilth so it is very nutritious and actually has a very very good drainage and all I'm going to do is dig a little hole pop the plant in so the roots are under the surface and the green is on the top pretty obvious really when you think about it and then I'm going to water that in it should start growing as soon as spring comes and the weather warms up and these are the two beds which we've decided to go with to put the strawberry plants in. This one and the one behind me and they get maximum sunlight all day. The sun rises straight ahead, sweeps around and then sets behind us. And the best thing about it is because strawberry plants are low growing, they don't stop the vegetable and fruit plants in the other beds to my left hand side from getting sunlight either. The only issue I do have is I've actually got three varieties of plants, an early, a mid and a late cropping variety, but only two beds. So I've divided up the sections so that the early, the mid and the late are in different areas. And to denote where the break is between the varieties, I've just put some yellow pegs in with some orange string between them. Very simple solution to a simple problem. My strawberry beds are now planted with these new strawberry plants and I've got the strawberry seeds started off in the electric propagators. So by the end of next year I should have two well established strawberry beds which are producing lots and lots of fruit in the following year. Now in this coming year I'm actually keeping my existing strawberry beds in place and that's because I do want to have some fruit. It's unlikely that these plants will be old enough or mature enough to produce anything of any decent quantity. Yes the existing beds will produce less fruit, yes the fruits will be smaller but at least I'll have some strawberries. If you have liked this content, take a moment and give me a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a subscriber, come and join us. Hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified of every new video as soon as it goes live. If you've got any questions for me, leave it in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But for now, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.